So I went for it. I uh, finally plugged in the ECU. I have done a trial run of this already very quickly before I videoed it. Didn't want to look like a prat when I blew it up. So I plugged in the ECU. I've got the OBD2 port connected. She's on that 12 volt battery. Engine side is clearly not connected as you can see here. This is the cabin area. This is everything here. Yes, it does go to math and vacuum and things like that, but that's by the by. So we've got this. We are gonna have codes for obvious reasons because there is loads of things not plugged into it. Turbo charge always goes solenoid. Can I scroll down and see? Which one's A circuit low? Intake air temp, because obviously I haven't got them plugged in. Fuel pump primary circuit, that's not plugged in either. Mass airflow, not plugged in. So I just keep scrolling around, but the good news is that works. So I'm gonna send it off to my man, Oakley, who's gonna remap this for me, and I'm really looking forward to getting it back. Thank you very much, mate. So this is the old vacuum ports, as I pointed out before. So it's a vacuum control unit, plugs into the ECU, does the DPF, does the boost, um, all those kind of things but i'm losing the dps because i've got the delete kit um i've also got a different manifold as you can see this manifold comes out on the left which is a bit of a pain because that's where the brake master cylinder goes and all that kind of gear so this is out of there and quite literally so i get to remove all these lovely airlines i'll take all these off all these vacuum pipes and everything and then if we go into here you will see, courtesy of Oakley, who's done a lovely job of my ECU, sent me a Passat inlet manifold. So this will sit around that way. All pipes will now go to the right and go into the intercooler. Also, I'm getting rid of that um, vacuum port for an N95 valve, as advised by Oakley again. So uh, thank you very much, mate. You've done a great job of it all, and I do appreciate the support. So, um, yeah, I'll keep you posted. Lovely weather today we're having. A little bit bluer than usual. Hello, hello. What we got here? Nice. Little cheeky little six speed shifter. No pedals. Who needs them? All connected in. They even got six. Reverse. It's all good. Very tough for this. So basically, this is a false floor. So to make it a little bit harder, it is, it is solid, don't get me wrong, but you could do it being a little bit firmer down. So what I'm gonna do is screw it down here and this side here. I've run it through the original shifter area, just cut a little bit of matting out just so I can enclose the gaping great big holes that's there. Put the original plate back down again. Made a bracket, which I think I showed you before. That is now on a little pedestal, which just happens to be some old exhaust tube I had. That bolts onto this. You do need to get to this from time to time. It's like, um, I don't know, it's just a space for wires. It has to be sort of gettable, basically. So what I'm gonna do is, run, is there is some little screws here, but they don't hold it enough. And wang two through there, and that hold that just a bit tighter, but that's not, that's only hand tight at the moment. But that's, that ain't going nowhere. That's cock on. What else have I got to report? So, shifter's in, I'm happy with that. It doesn't hit my legs, so that's a double bonus. If I come along over here, I have bought one of these. Um, this is a Paget from Euro Car Parts. It's just a clutch master. Looks like it's gonna do the job. Gonna have to run an extension onto this point here with an adjuster on it, so yes, you can adjust it in and out. It'll have its own reservoir, whereas before, the original set would have run off something along these lines. Um, unfortunately, I did snap this end off here, as you know, when pulling it out of the car, and it normally gets its um, fluid from the master cylinder of the brakes. But I didn't want to go that route. I wanted an individual cylinder for its own oil. So I'm going to be working on that. Uh, what else? I have cut the shafts down. So this is good, hard. Went for a few cutting discs, let me tell you. So this is see it side. 
That's it. And this, you see, it's so obviously strange because you get one massive one, massive pipe, a tube, and one small tube, as you can see from comparison. Um, then I have cut this here, which is um, tall but side, so this is wheel side. So I'm going to put these on, it is cut that in, it's just a rubber on there. Measure them all up over the weekend and then get them done. What we're looking at doing is having this machine down a little bit and possibly having either doweled so we can guarantee they're straight or have them so they slot inside each other, put a tube over it, weld up the hole first, slide the tube back over, weld up both sides. This one is a two-piece shaft originally on the tool book. So you end up with that. It goes into the gearbox, runs along here onto a two-piece part, uh, rides on this bearing on a mount, and then that goes into the long furthest away wheel, meaning the driver's side, I believe. What we're looking at doing, um, the this one, I believe would be the longest one, of course. So basically from there to there, from what I have measured, it needs an extra eight inches. <clears throat> oh, I did use a tape measure. So what I did, what we're gonna do, is probably just cut this about there and extend it. I think, no, we're about there, sorry. So it's quite minimum. And hopefully that will work that long drive shaft. I don't know as I've never done it before, but we'll soon find out.